All right. Um, sorry about that. I'm going to have to do a part. This is going to have to be a part two uh, to how the court system forced me out of my eight children's lives. Um, there was something that happened, the devil, but internet went down and cut my video off. So it's guys, if you really just want to know the story, I'm not going to worry about time here, but this is for your education to understand how the enemy, when I played football, one of the things you need to do is you need to study, study thyself and know your strength and your weakness. And then you study your opponent and the opponent for us saints are the, is the devil. And his angel, you got to study the devil. God has given us a, a, a playbook called the Holy Bible. That right there gives you everything you need to know about how the devil works. It also tells you the nature of man, us. Everything in that Bible, in that playbook, gives you the, the, uh, the, the, the instructions that you need on how to resist the devil. So anyway, I am just, I am just a human being. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything that I'm sharing with you is in that Bible. I'm just confirming. I am testifying that the Bible is true. And, uh, and I'm also testifying that Pastor Dow knows what he's talking about. Okay, this is not crazy. This is not some uh, third world. We are living in the, in the greatest nation in the world where we are supposed to be free. And things, are like, th things like this that people can literally lose their children in this nation. It is utterly amazing, utterly amazing. So anyway, I'm going to finish my story. So I was going on talking about my dad, how my dad taught me. I mean, he taught us to be proud of our name, the Baja B. Miller family. That when you go out there, you represent that we I always knew that I represented the Baja B. Miller family, that I represented my father. I represented my community. I came from South Central Los Angeles. I wanted to be a light, a, a positive for South Central Los Angeles. Even though it was known for gangs and boys in the hood, I wanted to be a, an ambassador for San Diego State University. I wanted to be an ambassador, a good ambassador for the Green Bay Packers. I wanted to be a good ambassador for my own household. So, I mean, I have that in my mindset. And so for me to just lose it all for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, for the, for the, for the gospel, this was not easy because there was the devil's banking on that my reputation, the money, the family, all of the stuff that that I may have unknowingly put my trust in could have been at stake. I mean, it was a job moment. The only reason why Kabir said he loves you because he has all of these good stuff. He has a wife. He has his children. He has his health. He has he has everything. The only reason why he can say hallelujah is only because all of this good stuff. That if he lost all of those things, he will curse you. To I bet you that's what the accuser is doing. I bet you. But I'm not. I'm not. I love Jesus Christ. People could say I'm part of a cult. You're right. I am part of a cult. It's the culture of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And I'm preparing to be in that kingdom for eternity. And so this is my training ground. This is our training ground, saints. This is the training ground to prepare us for that kingdom, for eternity. Not, this is temporary. This is temporary. When we do the Feast of Tabernacle, that's what we're doing. We're, we're staying in temporary dwellings. And then on that last great day, we get to go home, our permanent home. This is not permanent. This is temporary. So anyway, I'm going to answer this woman's question, how I got forced out. And forgive me for digressing, but this is just, uh, you know, I'm going to get better. Forgive me. Sue me. I have nothing to lose. So anyway, this is for your, I'm putting my stuff out there. There's nothing to brag about. I'm putting it out here as an encouragement for you all. So anyway, so my wife used the court system, just like Pastor Dow will be talking about, that he, she used the court system to usurp my authority. The Bible says that, but, that, that I suffer not that woman um, uh, instructor usurped the authority of the husband or a man, period, a man. So my wife couldn't do it to me. So she got, she went to the Supreme Court. You know, I've been talking about this whole president's Congress. Supreme. So she went to the court system to usurp my authority to get me to do things that she couldn't get me or, you know, manipulate me to get me to do. So she used the court system to get me to do things that I, I wasn't want, I didn't want to do. And if you don't do what the court tells you to do, they'll throw you in jail or they will do, they will do something. They have a way to get them to get you to do what you need to do. And literally the court system can give a damn about what the man thinks. 
It's all about, it, it is literally a system that's set up to just do whatever, it, it does the woman's bidding. And if you want it to stop, if a man want that thing to stop, he needs to get on his knees and he needs to acquiesce and capitulate to that wife. That's the only way I can stop my situation. If I wanted this thing to end right now, I just got to get on my knees, cut my balls, emasculate myself, and, and, and I will get this. This thing will all come to an end. So, yes, all of this is happening because I refuse to capitulate and acquiesce to a woman. I will not do that because for me to do that would mean that I would have to disobey Jesus Christ, who is my head, to be able to please my subordinate. She's my subordinate. I am Jesus Christ subordinate. And I'm not going to do it. She can take the whole thing. I don't care. I have learned to be content in all situations. I've learned to be content with a lot. And I've learned to be content with a little. That's the key to richness. To be content. I don't need all this stuff. It was good. I love it. It was nice. But that's not who I am. I am a servant of the Most High. So anyway. This is serious stuff. So it's not like when um, they said, as long as you don't denounce, if you denounce me before man, I will denounce you before my father. People think it's going to be like a gun to your head and say, denounce Jesus Christ. Where it's just overt, like, oh, he's asking me to denounce Jesus Christ. I can't do that. No, no. It's going to come in a way that it seems hidden, like my situation. People are saying, Kabir, fight for your kids. I got my lawyer. Fight for your kids. My wife is fighting for the kid. Everybody said, fight. I'm like, but man. This co-parenting doesn't work. So what they did was they gave me a female supervisor. Or, well, I had a, I hired it. I hired it. I had to hire somebody who was credible. So we got somebody from social services or protective. I don't know if it's social service or whatever, but we had to hire a professional who had credibility with the court system. I was paying her $50 an hour to watch me with my children. $50. I had three hours on Tuesdays, three hours on Thursdays, and six hours on Sundays. They would not allow me to have my children on the Sabbath because my wife did not want me to have my children on the Sabbath day. So I, that's what I was working. So I was working with 12 hours. I was paying literally $600 a week. $600 a week to see my seeds, my children. That's, that's what, if, 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 if she couldn't make it, I couldn't see my children. And when you do this, then they put you in a situation where they want you to act a certain way. They, and the woman was even telling me how to act. And I mean, a woman, I mean, guys, I, oh my goodness, a woman telling me how to be a father. I mean, is that an ox, is that an oxymoron? How can a woman teach a man how to be a father? I mean, it just it's just utterly amazing. It is the it is the worst it is worse than I mean, bro, it is it is bad. It is a it is horrible. I, I wish that upon no man. And I went through it. I, I I said, let me go through this process because I, I know I'm a good father. I don't need anyone to tell me I'm a good father. The proof is in the pudding. I can take, I love parenting. I love fathering. I love taking, training kids. I saw myself like a coach and it's my job to prepare them for Jesus Christ. That's how I looked at it. I'm just a coach and I'm going to train them. And I'll use all the devices that I need that the Bible says that I can use to do that. But the system don't give a damn about what the Bible has to say, period. So anyway, so this woman is trying to tell me how to be a father. So they told me I could not no longer use any type of object to discipline my children. I could not use the rod of correction. I can only use my hands. I never you in this 15 years, I rarely use my hands for my children. This hands was for love. So I could do this to my kids. They will never think that I would do something because when they got disciplined, they knew when they're going to get disciplined. And because when I brought that rod or the, uh, the, the, the object that I was going to use to uh, discipline them, they knew exactly what it was for. And why? And now the court system saying that I cannot do that. I can only use my hands. Well, I'm not going to do that. Because now they're trying to change how I do things. They said I couldn't take my kids out of the state of Wisconsin. So I couldn't. So they just very, they just, they, they put you in this thing. And so by the time you go through all of the hoops they tell you to go through, 
You end up coming out as a shell of a man. They literally wanted me to kiss my children's ass. That's what it is. Hey, Johnny, how's your day? Oh, you seem mad right now. That's not the type of relationship. I'm not going to... Man, I've worked too hard. I got neck issues, knee. Oh, I've worked too hard to sit down and acquiesce and capitulate to my children. They're to acquiesce to me. They're to, 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 to entreat me. I am not here to entreat them, but that's what the system try to get men to do, to entreat their children. It's not their fault, but you don't come in here and tell me how to train my children. I have had a father before me. I had a father for, before me. He had a father before him. I think we did something right. But then I have a whole bunch of people in a white, a predominantly white community trying to tell me how to raise a black child in this white community, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? My children, me, cannot do the same thing that they have done that their white counterparts can do. They will get their ass shot if they don't know how to obey certain things. I'm here trying to get them to survive, to be succeed in white America. And I got white people telling me, white women telling me how to train my children, my seven boys, how to be men. So that's so when I looked at the when I when I went through this hoops and kind of seeing what they were doing and she's usurping my authority in front of the children and dishonoring me in front of my children. I said, you know something? My wife can have the children. She can have them. I am not going to because by the time I come out of here, I'll be worse than what I started. It's just exactly what Jesus says. If you try to save your life, if you try to save your children, you're gonna lose it. And if you lose it, for my name's sake, you will gain it. So I decided to just she can have the kids. She, sorry, children. She can have the children. She can have them. I will just move on. They will They will have a moment and a time and, 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 and y'all willing to come back and say, Dad, what happened? And and I would tell them, here's what happened. And, I, and, and, and let my life be an example so that they can now take it to the next level. Yes, I've done well financially and stuff like this, but now I can help my next generation if they choose. That they never be in this situation. When Pastor Dow says, do not get a marriage license, do not get, I repeat, do not get a marriage license. It completely, you are giving your strength to a woman. The Bible says in Proverbs 31, 3, do not give your strengths to a woman. I don't care how sweet, how beautiful, how, how religious they may be. All women, all women. Will if, if, if they get into a weak moment and you give them their strength, they will destroy you. They will destroy you. They, they, they can't even stop themselves. They can't even stop themselves because they're, they, they're so full of emotions. And they don't even think straight when they're in that moment. And that's how the devil destroy homes. A lot of American homes are under the influence of Satan. If you have a marriage license and you are in, and, and, and if you, um, you, you just, you, you, you have nothing. What, what can a man do? What can you do to get your wife in line? The only way you can do that, if you have the ability to, uh, be able to, uh, give consequences to your wife when she's not doing what she's doing right. Right now, my wife has the power. She has strengths. She's using the court system to make me do things that I don't want to do. I don't want to do them. But if I don't do them, there are consequences. She has the ability to actually inflict pain on my situation. I don't have that ability within the law of America. I don't have that. I don't have the ability. All I can do is hope that she would do what I ask her to do. I'm at her mercy. And so the only thing that I can do right now is stand. And that's what I'm doing. I'm standing. I'm saying that you can do whatever you got to do, but I'm not moving. And this, if this family goes down, it's because of you, woman. It's because of you. You're the reason why this family is going down. You're the one that's going to have to answer the Most High why you disobeyed his laws and his commandments. You can sit here and say, I thought the law was done away with. Go ahead and knock yourself out. But this is all in the New Testament. You're going to have to explain that. And all you women, I, 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 I warn you. If you do not have a cover, get under a cover. If it's your father, your husband, if, if you don't have those, get, get find an elder. Get, you need to have a cover because I, I really believe a lot of women are going to hell. If they don't have a cover and they don't have that, that real-time 
um, ability to know that they are being faithful in what they're doing, they're going to hell. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. So if you don't have the fear of Yah, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. So anyway, that's how I got forced out. I got forced out because I wasn't willing to jump through the hoops to try to win my children back. Because me jumping through these hoops, I would have been a shell of a man. I wouldn't even be a father anymore. And I'd rather, I'd rather be remembered I'd rather be remembered as being a strong man than being a weak man. And so I allowed my wife to have these children. I will end on this note. And I know it got long because it's very emotional. And um, I don't know how to condense something like this. This is, this is, that was a powerful question that, that, that this woman asked. But I'll end on this note. And this is what Yacht put on my heart when I made the decision, which was very hard. I haven't even seen my eighth child yet. I have a son. My wife gave him his, his name. She gave him, she, she did it all without me, without, I mean, it's just utterly amazing. It is, if you knew me, I cut every child, all seven children, even during the times I was playing for the Packers, I was able to cut the umbilical cord of all my children. I named all my children. I took the time to come up with names that had meaning. I was not just a guy that said, oh, whatever you want to name it. Oh, that's so cute. That's a cute name. No. Everything I did had intentions. I was a, I, I'm a man of intentions. And so that's how I live my life. So this was a very hard one to do. I'm in this. I'm not. I have, I have a son that I've never touched with my, with my hands and seen with my natural eyes. Touched and held to be with the son and, say, and give him my blessing. Because my wife believed that she is equal to me. And we will see. We will see. Maybe she's right. I doubt it. But let's see. Let's see how she's going to handle herself without the father. If the father is that, if the father is that um, insignificant, let's just see. Look at our country now. Men are locked up in jails, being forced out of their family through the court system because they're capitulated because the court system is set up just to help the women. It's, it's crazy. It is literally crazy, people. And I'm putting my stuff out there because I'm trying to make it known. Do not get a marriage license. I beg you, do not. If you truly love your family, do not. It, I'll even go as far as to say, if you could, divorce your wife right now on paper so that you can be free from the state. That's why I'm filing for divorce. My wife filed for legal separation. She didn't want to divorce. She just wanted to do a legal separation to go through all the system to control me and manipulate. I decided to turn into a divorce. I turned into a divorce. Why? Because I really am divorcing the state. I want the state out of my business because they don't have my children and my family best interests at heart. They don't. All they give a damn about is making my wife happy. They're, they're working on her behalf. They don't even ask me for my opinion. It's all about what she wants. I mean, literally, you're going to a system you know you're going to lose. I mean, it's weird. You're going to lose. It's just how you're going to lose. Do you want to slow it down? Do you want to lose at this time? Or But you're going to lose. If you're a man, you're going to lose. Period. I mean, I, it's, I even tell my lawyer, I, I don't, hey, don't, don't make me think I'm going to win. I already know I'm going to. I get it. I have come past the denial. I get it. So tell me how we're going to lose. Can we determine how we lose? That's all you can really do. You can determine how you're going to lose. That's it. A woman comes in getting everything she wants. All you can do as a man is delay and try to get it to lose in a way that make it reasonable. But you got to get it through your head. You're going to lose. Period. The only way you can win if you're trying to get your family back is you have to acquiesce and capitulate to that woman. That's it. But that's losing. Because my allegiance belong to Jesus Christ alone. I am for Jesus. That's who I answer to. And my job is to love my wife like Christ loved the church. To make her holy. Not happy. And that was my mistake. To make her holy. Not happy. And to give her food. Shelter. Conjure rights. Those are the things that I'm supposed to do. And to train my children the way they should go. That's my job. And that's what I was striving for. And that's why I love Pastor Dow. Because Pastor Dow empowered men. 
He's the only ministry that I know that actually empower men to be godly men. But the problem that you have to get through or the, the, the challenge you have to get through is that if you're trying to be godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. And so you got to learn to stand. You got to learn to stand. So anyway, that's how I got forced out. I gave my children up. I know I said I was going to end it. I'm going to end it right here. Here's the story. The Holy Spirit put on my heart about Solomon. I haven't even read this story in a long time. I, I've been only in the last time, but, but Solomon had two women. Two women. One woman, they both had children. One of the children died. I think that when one went to the bathroom or whatever, or whatever swapped the babies. When they woke up in the morning, they rec reckon, one of the, the, the mother recognized, this is not my child. The baby was dead, but she said, this is not my child. That's my child. So they went before King Solomon and says, King Solomon, that's my baby. No, that's my baby. They're fighting. Uh, and they're fighting over a child. And King Solomon in his wisdom decided to say, get me a sword. He asked for a sword to cut the baby in half. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the fake mom said, yep, cut him up. And the real mom said, no, 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 no. Let her have it. Let her have it. I rather see my children, my child live than to be cut in half. And the way this court system works, that's exactly what they do to these children. If I fight for them and my wife is fighting for them, you're literally are cutting up your children emotionally, spiritually. You, they, they physically, they're all there, but you're cutting them up. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, in all his ways. And so I love my children enough to let them go. So that they wouldn't be cut up by this wicked system. I let them go. Because I am the father of those children. I have the greatest, the greatest stake in my children's lives than my wife does. Those are my seeds. Those are not her seeds. Those are my seeds. Those children came from me. Yeah, it came through her. But they came from me. And because I love them, and I hope one day you get to see this video, I let them go so that they wouldn't be divided emotionally or spiritually. I wanted to give them a fighting chance that when they get from the grips of their mom, that one day I'd rather have them experience all bad, that when they come out and they read the word of Yah for themselves, they can see that all daddy was trying to do was follow the book, try to follow the Holy Bible to the best of his ability. That was the best decision I could make. It was the hardest decision. I had to deliberate. I had cried. I, I mean, I went through emotional torment to let them go. That's why I let them go. The court system wanted me to try to fight for them only to tear and emotionally destroy my children and to make me a shell of a man. It was like going back into slavery time. This is exactly what they did back in the days in this country, in this wicked nation. They would take a strong black man and beat the shit out of him. And I'm using strong, I don't give a damn about my reputation anymore. I'm not going to be this clear. I'm going to speak truth. The world needs to understand truth. They take a black man Put him on a tree and beat the crap out of him in front of his children, in front of his wife. Say, if you ever try to be a mount to anything except a nigger, except a slave, we will beat you down. You see what we're doing to your daddy? If you even rise up against a white man, this is exactly how we're going to treat you. And that's what they're doing right now. They're doing it in the, in the, in the sly way through the court system. They're beating me down in front of my children, teaching my children, you better not be a man. You listen to a woman. And that's how you keep the black man down. They go around breaking black homes down. One of the biggest mistakes I made is staying in this community. Because I'm a bunch around white people who look nice, they smile on your face, and they'll savvy in your back. 
They don't care about the black struggle. I'm not, I've never been that guy. Never had a chip on my shoulder. Never, I, I've had good black, white teachers. I have, I have brothers and sisters in the, in the faith that are Caucasian, light-skinned. Love them. I have people in this community that are white. But I'm just telling you, the system do not want a black man doing well. It is, it, for them, destroying the black family is like, man, that is, that is perfect. They do it all the time with Planned Parenthood. This is perfect. They, they were able to get in behind this black success. I, be, I believe there's a lot of people who are envious and jealous of me. And to see what is to, to, to what my wife has allowed people to do to come in here because of her emotion to destroy this family. It's just foolish. It's just straight foolish. And they're 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 going to fleece her, too. When they're done getting everything out of her, they're going to do the same thing to her. If they can drop me like a bad habit, they're going to drop her too. When she no longer served their need, they're going to do the same thing. I'm the one that had all the relationship that she had. I'm the one that had more time, spent more time with the people that she went. I, I'm the one that had the relationship. And they dropped me. Just because I was no longer following their lead. I was following Jesus. So people, I hope I answered the question. I, I'm sorry, I got emotional. This went further than what I thought. I mean, just the, this answering this question just got very emotional. But I hope I answered your question. I know I was very thorough. If you want to go through the whole thing, some people may think it's, but you know, it, it doesn't matter to me. I answered the question. So I'm going to go back to YouTube. I'm going to tell you, check my YouTube and you can get your answer. If you if you care to hear, you're the one to answer the, uh, you're the one to ask the question. And I thought it was a great question. And as you can see, I got emotional. But guys, the system is wicked. And we are in the last days. The king is coming. We are in the last days. And, and I'm so thankful for people like Pastor Dow. It was people like, that y'all use, like Pastor Dow, other people, like uh, a friend of mine here, Pastor Ray David. There's so many people. But Pastor Dow literally um, saved my life and gave and, and basically helped me to navigate this wicked time in my life. And I just want to tell you right now, um, guys, that is a man of Yah. And the only reason why he was able to help me to navigate, I am stronger now. I am stronger now. But the only reason why I was able to navigate through that is because he has gone through the fire himself. He has lost men. He has lost much. For, for He's been doing this for over 20-something years. I could not have made it without that man. And so I thank Yah for Pastor Dow. So if anybody has an issue with Pastor Dow, you have an issue with me. So I love that man. You can call him a cult. You can call him this, that. That man saved me. Like when the Christians turned their back on and I had suicidal thoughts, no one was, be, no one was there for me. No one. And the only person that was talking to me and, and pushing me through the stuff and like a coach was Pastor Dow. So you can say he's prideful. He's arrogant. That man is the most lovingest man I've ever met in my life. Next to my dad. That is a loving man. That man loves people. And I hope that I can do double what Pastor Dow's done. I hope that I can impact the world triple than what Pastor Dow's doing. I hope I have the strength of Pastor Dow triple as what he has. So anyway, I'm sorry. Shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah.